Hey guys, so today we're going to have a little bit of fun exploring some of the niche type things that we can do with the HD0 Halo and HD0 VTX. And the first thing we're going to take a look at is a switchable 9 volt BEC, which is an alternative way of uh, doing a pit mode that's going to be completely powering everything off, cuts off power. So it's, it's got some pros and cons and, and we'll take a look at that. The next thing that we'll take a look at is camera switching. So you can actually have more than one maybe cable connected to your VTX and switch between them and it's really fast and really cool. So I'm excited to show you that. And then the last thing is I'm going to show you how to wire up a servo to the Halo flight controller so that you can have fun with that. And I'll, I'll show you, I have a demonstrator drone I built up to, to kind of play around with the concept. So with that, let's get into it. So on the Halo flight controller, the digital plug has the ability to actually turn the power on and off. And that can be really handy if you're at a race and you don't know how long it's gonna be before you're gonna fly, but you have to plug in. Normally I would say use the software pit mode. It's instantaneous when you fl flick a switch, but the downside is it kind of puts the VTX in standby mode using maybe about a half a watt of power. And over time that kind of builds up heat on the VTX and the flight controller. So if you want to have no heat generated at all, let's take a look at doing the switchable 9 volt BEC. So with the switch pullback, I can program it so that when I power on, there's no, there's no power that goes to the VTX. There's no blue light. And now if I flick a switch here, you'll see the VTX start to boot up. That's that blue light right there. And now it is transmitting. And within about two seconds of me flicking the switch, you'll see video on the screen. That's opposed to basically basically instantaneous with the software solution, but this uses no power at all. So let's take a look at how to configure it. Okay, so let's see how to configure the switchable nine volt back. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go consult the manual. So this is at hd0.com slash support. And in the Halo manual, there's the switchable nine volt back option. And so what we'll do is follow the instructions and go into the configurator and then go to CLI and put in this information right here. Here we are in CLI. So I'm gonna take this, copy it, and paste it in. And hit enter. Okay, and then save. Once you do that, there's gonna be a new thing called user in the modes. So if we go down to user one, we now have this option that was not here before. So I've set it up for aux four. When aux four goes high, then it will turn on the nine volt back. So one important thing to point out here is let's say your radio is not connected and you wanna make sure that this actually does prevent uh, the video from turning on even if the radio is not connected. Well, we need to go to fail safe for that. And in fail safe, we need to set aux four, which is the channel that I was using to a low value. So 1000 here is gonna be the low value. So in fail safe, um, when we're not connected with the radio, the video is gonna remain off because this is set to 1000. Okay, another important thing to point out here. So if you were using the VTX control option for team race mode before, we'll wanna turn that off. And to do that, we're gonna go to CLI and then type VTX. And then this gives you a list. And what we wanna see here is all of the values be, to be zero kind of in, in those middle columns. So I actually do have one wrong here. I'm gonna reassign this to be all zeros in the middle. So we'll copy this, put it in here, and then take this number here and make it a zero and then enter and then save. So that's gonna prevent any of the behind the scenes CLI code from from changing the VTX power levels. And now everything's gonna be handled by the nine volt BEC. One last thing to point out is if you had turned on team race mode on your VTX, you'll want to have turned that off before you assign this. So that's it.
pretty neat way to do it. And so the benefits are completely no power usage on the flight controller or on the VTX, everything stays nice and cool. The downside is it's gonna take about two seconds from flicking that switch on to then receiving the video versus basically instantaneous with the kind of hot standby mode that the team race option uses. So there you go. Let me know if you have any questions. Now, another thing that I recommend doing is to kind of put in a safety so that the video doesn't turn off while the drone is armed. And for that, I'm gonna go down here back to our user one, and I'm gonna put in a add range basically and map it to the aux one, which is what I have for arm. And basically if my arm switches on, it's going to force the video to be on and, and use an or statement here rather than and. Um, so what, what, what that will do is when the drone is armed, the video is going to turn on, or if the drone is armed, the uh, user switch will not turn the video off. So with camera switching, I've got one view here, I flick this, and now I've got the other camera. And I can just switch back and forth between them really fast like this. Super cool. So here's the setup that I'm testing with. I've got a camera in the front and then a down facing camera right here. And then I can switch between them with the MIPI switching board that's kind of nestled in the middle there. So next, let's take a look at how to configure our camera switcher. This is a really cool little board designed by Avi and here comes Whitey from the Discord community. And it's just a simple 20 by 20 board that has a MIPI kind of switcher built into it. And there's a lot of different ways that you can control it. The easiest one is just assigning a switch on iNav or Betaflight. But you can also do things like controlling it through um, manual control that they have here. But I'm just going to show you how I have it set up. And that is, I have camera one going into this port, I have camera two going into this port, and then I have another MIPI cable going to, out to the VTX. Really simple. And then all we have to do is go into beta flight, and then there's this camera control option that we're going to use, and it'll just flip between the two of them. Very simple. So let's take a look at that. You just go to the modes tab in beta flight, and then I'll go down to camera control one. And then I have it set up for aux four. When I go to the full down position, it's going to switch to my down facing camera. In the middle position, it's gonna show my main forward facing camera. And in the low position, it's gonna turn the VTX off. So that's the way I like to have it configured. I can kind of go progressively down and you know, get my flight camera and then get my down facing camera. Really simple, really easy, and it's super fast. I'm really impressed with this and I think, uh, yeah, really neat. So the main thing that you need is you have to have compatible HD zero firmware uh, applied to the VTX and then just configure this camera control one option and it just works really cool. And here is the servo control that I've got. So I have a little dropping thing here and I'm gonna drop a little battery like a resupply. So if I flick this switch, servo moves. Pretty neat. So setting up a servo is actually a little bit tricky, trickier than I thought it would be. On the one hand, it's really easy because you can take any corner of the Halo FC. These are all LED pads that have five volt ground and then the LED signal. And you can wire a servo to these three pads, right? So you have the servo going to the signal for the LED pad and then the ground and the five volt. So any four of the, any corner you can, you can map to be a servo. The tricky thing is getting Betaflight set up for servo control. So let's take a look at that. First thing you'll need to do is connect up Sometimes you need to do, I can't find my USB device and that'll bring up a pop-up. Let's see here. I can't find my USB. There it is. Connect. 
And here we are, and we're in Betaflight 451. And what we need to do is look in here for something called servo tilt, but it's not here. And that's gonna be our first problem. So we need to see about enabling servo tilt. So normally we can just go to CLI and we can make the LED pad, which has a timer on it, be the servo control pad. And to do that, we would do, we type resource and then LED strip, none. And that frees it up so that we can do something else with it. And then what we're gonna do is, I know that the LED strip was A10. So I'm gonna do resource servo one A10. And the problem here is it's gonna be like, I don't know what servo is. And the, the reason is that the servo capability is not actually compiled into this firmware. So we need to make a new custom firmware that does have it. So let's take a look at how to do that. So we'll click update firmware, of course, detect the board automatically. And then here's the thing that we're missing. We need to add in servo right here. And that was the missing piece. So we'll do a load firmware online and then that will click off a cloud build if it wasn't already there and we can do flash. It's gonna ask you to back up, sure. And that'll take a while and we'll be back. All right, so we're back and everything's flashed. Let's connect up. And now when we go to config, we now have a servo tail option. This was not here before. So I'm gonna turn off channel forwarding and we'll keep servo tail on, save reboot. And then we'll get into CLI and start remapping things. So we'll go to CLI here. If we type resource all, I think it's like show all. Yeah, like that. That'll show us everything that's set up. And what we're looking for is the LED strip. So the LED strip is right here and it's on pin A10. So we're gonna reuse A10 as our servo. So remember that one. And what we'll do here is we're gonna free up this LED strip. So we'll do resource LED strip none, and that'll allow us to use it for the servo. And then I'll type resource servo one as A10, because A10 is the pin that the LED strip was on, and then we'll do save. So now we go into the configurator. We're going to see that there's a servo area. And in here, we can pick the aux channel that we want to use to control the servo. So let's say I want aux three to control my servo. I hit save, and now at this point, aux three is now going to be mapped to controlling our servo. It's really just that simple. Um, there's not a lot of configuration that you can do beyond that. There's some other things you can do like camera stabilization with, with this so that the, the accelerometer will automatically kind of stabilize a camera gimbal, uh, but we're not doing any of that. 